Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Base Channel. This is going to be kind of a, a funky special episode. We've got a couple few milestones coming up and uh, I wanted to do a little something special for Chris because Chris puts all of his uh, heart, soul, energy, blood, sweat, and tears into this channel and I got him a little gift. All right, we're giving, we're giving this guy this box. All right. Uh, there you go, bro. It's not wrapped or anything. As soon right. as you open it, you will see it. Oh, what the fuck! That is the coolest shit I've ever seen. What is going on, everybody? Chris from the Base Channel here, and welcome to what is shaping up to be the most special Fuzz Friday of the year, because today, Friday, April 1st, if my calculations are correct, the base channel should be crossing the 100,000 subscriber mark. So to celebrate this milestone, we are taking a look at the custom base channel edition of The Bastard from Sign Labs. you recall we looked at this pedal last year sometime around July or August maybe uh, and I have gone on record a couple of different times saying that not only was it my favorite fuzz of 2021 it's in my top five or maybe top ten I don't know I haven't really counted but it's definitely among my favorite fuzz circuits uh, of all the fuzzes I have ever heard this is up there with the best for me and what I want to hear Th that thing sounds awesome that is probably in my top ten fuzzes of all time but my probably favorite fuzz of this year. See, I did say that. So today we are going to listen to this pedal with a bunch of different wiretap samples. Now, normally I choose samples that I think sound good with any given unit. That is still the case here, but this time around I have specifically and carefully chosen uh, just some notable riffs that I like, some notable riffs that were captured during some notable times in our six year career. Uh, and some riffs that you've probably never heard before. And once you hear them, you'll see why. Uh, so let's get on with it. This first one that we're going to hear was the first wiretap riff we ever recorded, which I believe was March of 2018. Actually, I believe it was March 23rd of 2018. Uh, I could be wrong on the specific date, but this is the first wiretap riff we ever recorded. So sticking with the spring of 2018, here's two more wiretap riffs that, uh, again, I think stand out in the riffs that we recorded specifically for Fuzz. Right here, uh, we rolled when we did our Dunlop Tortex size shootout. We did all of the colors for the standard Tortex pick. Uh, now the one you're gonna hear, I don't remember which color. Might be yellow, might be orange. Uh, but it's the green Fender PJ with the geezer pickups that everyone seems to really like. I like it too. Uh, so here is a clip from that video. This one I did actually, I think also March of 2020, uh, right when everything kind of started to go downhill for just about everyone in the world. 
But for some reason, this riff just sticks out. It was fun to do. It sounds good with a lot of different dirt pedals. I think it's the bass was tuned to C standard, if I'm not mistaken. So the A string is now the F string. And it's just a fun, low frequency on the Epiphone Thunderbird that, in my opinion, suits a lot of dirt pedals quite well. And it's a Rob Zombie riff, so that's a bonus. Okay, so as you guys have heard me say over the last however many years it's been, the wiretap is awesome because it alleviates schedule problems. It allows me to have the same effect of having multiple players in the room, even though I can't get them in the room at the same time. But there's plenty more advantages to that. One of them being is I can wiretap shows. I can bring a camera, I can bring the wiretap pedal, put the wiretap first in the signal chain after the bass, and I can capture whatever that given player played at the show. Now, naturally, sometimes getting the audio from the rest of the band is the struggle, but it came out of a time when we would shoot like delay pedals or weird wacky effects, and we would do it live off the floor. We'll do it live, fuck it. And one of the critiques, I guess, that we got was, cool, yeah, the pedal sounds fun, but these lines aren't representative of what a bass player would play. So I figure, well, what lines would better represent what a bass player would play than the lines that they play at a gig in front of a live paying audience? So we've got a couple samples queued up. The first one is a very quick clip uh, from a show Nick did, I think in 2019, where they open with this big, you know, trash can opening and uh, Nick does something like, you know, you know, hey, everybody, welcome, uh, we're the Seaside Band, etc., etc. But he basically just plays really big chords and these like leads on the bass. I think it's like 20 seconds long, but it sounds awesome. Check it out. Okay, so I mentioned in the beginning of the video that you're gonna hear some wiretap riffs that you have not heard before for good reason. So this first one, I'm gonna try to give a quick backstory. I was supposed to play a gig at the time I was playing lead guitar, a lot of shreddy, a lot of wheelie wheelies, and a lot of uh, improvisational leads, right? It was just in between vocals. This is the key of the song, go! And I would just noodle in, in pentatonic. Well, Will was in that band with us, and, and one show he couldn't make it. So I was uh, understandably not excited about doing a show without bass because we had tried that before and it was horrific. And so I said, I'm gonna not do the lead, I'm gonna play the bass. And the guy singing was not happy with that arrangement. He wanted the leads. So last minute, my best compromise was to play the bass six. So through most of those songs, I would play the bass part. And then when it came time to where I would normally do a lead, I would try to do the lead on the bass six. Most of the time it was pretty horrific. There were a couple parts that were okay, but most of the time it was just awkward because I'm used to playing those type of runs on a standard guitar strung with nines or tens or whatever. And now I'm playing a bass six strung with, I don't know, I think the lightest string is a 26. So here is, uh, I believe the song was Blue Suede Shoes. So it's a very traditional bomb ba bomb ba bomb ba bomb ba bomb kind of bass line that I, oh man, that I then had to go into solo. Anyway, check it out. Uh, this will probably be the last time you ever hear this, so we can all suffer through it together.
so uh, I'm sure you can see why we haven't used that. Um, here's another one we haven't used from a live show. Uh, this time it's Josh playing. I was playing drums. Josh was playing bass. We were doing a King's Revenge acoustic thing, and I was filling in. But I had just gotten that Warwick Thumb 5 fretless from John Munyer, who we're going to talk about later. And I thought, you know, how cool would it be to play a fretless at an acoustic gig? And not only did that bass just sound unreasonably thin, Josh isn't particularly familiar with fretless, so a lot of that show was very out of tune. <laughs> um, but here's a clip of it. I don't remember what song it is. If it, if it comes to me in the editing, I'll put it in the somewhere over here on the screen, maybe just giant over my face. But here's Josh uh, playing a live gig with a fretless Warwick Thumb 5. course we did capture some good shows some shows that sounded good and were played well of course most notably this one wasn't a live gig but it was set up to look like a live gig with Will's band Cuvo when they did my son um, that whole thing was I set that up specifically to do wiretap because I, I wanted the rest of the band to be recorded so I could mix Will's bass in with you know whatever effect we're running and the rest of the band kind of mixed however I would need it to be mixed. So here's that through the new uh, custom bass channel, Bastard. I also made it out to, actually I made it out to a couple of uh, Johnny's gigs, Johnny Boy's gigs, but this one in particular, I just, I was really happy with the shots and his energy was really cool. And uh, this one I've used, I haven't used it in a little while, but we have seen it before, but here's a clip from a live gig uh, from Johnny's band, Blues Bowl. said this is going to be a little bit more of a self-indulgent episode uh, we're not going to spend a tremendous amount of time talking about the inner workings of this pedal if you want to know there's a link in the description to sign labs website or you can check out the video that we did last year that's a little bit more objective and less about us so let's move right along with the narcissism uh, over the last six years the lifetime of the channel uh, I have been grateful and we have been fortunate to go a lot of different places and meet a lot of different cool, really cool people. Most of whom we've done wiretap recordings with. Not all yet, we're getting there, I'm going to. Um, but of the people that we have met and have wiretap clips of, uh, first comes to mind is Divinity Rocks. Chris Rodriguez from the German rock band Revolver Held. We've got Will Shively from Boys to Men. friend John Munyer. We 
we've got Nick Shingelis from, he's been in a handful of bands, but it's Fall at Carnage, Havoc, Job for a Cowboy, Nuclear Power Trio. Uh, he's a really fun dude. Check this out. And of course, our favorite, our best friend from Texas, Patrick Hunter. Now, again, in addition to those people, there are some other really cool people that we have met. Uh, some of them I'm working on, like Ashley Reeve. Uh, we did do some wiretap with Walt Jones, but his playing style doesn't quite suit Fuzz, so I didn't include any of his playing in this example, but here's a little screenshot of him. Thanks again, Walt, for stopping by. Uh, Adam Neely is another one that comes to mind, and a bunch of the people that we met at TGU and GitCon from 2018. Uh, that was a really fun time. I'm bummed that I didn't get to wiretap everybody, but hopefully in the future, if we can go out and do another fun event, I'll make a point to try to add them to the collection and get them on the channel. But other than for going cool places and meeting cool new friends, uh, we've had a chance to do some recordings with some old friends and some new friends due to the recording. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is my friend Dan Fischetti. Uh, we did the Blue Violence album together. I played drums on all the tracks. I played bass on a couple tracks. Uh, I think Will played bass on one. Nick played bass on three of them. And then I think Dan played bass on one or two. Uh, so this is one that, that Dan played bass on using my 2015 Cherry SG bass. Uh, we've used this before. Hopefully you dig the song. Um, I had a fun time playing it and mixing it and producing it. And uh, here it is. The other fun recording project was the Lunar Satan project uh, that kind of came to me in June of 2019. Uh, Clint reached out and just basically asked me if I wanted to lay down a track for one of the songs on the Lunar Satan album. And I said, of course, send it on over and I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll lay it down. And fortunately that led to invite number two and invite number three and eventually all 10. I was, I'm proud to say that I am on all 10 songs of that album. Uh, it was the first, really the first project that I, I'm like, I am the bass player. I wasn't just, you know, I didn't just play on one song and I didn't just do this. So that album is, is really special to me. It was really fun to do. Now this clip I don't have video of, so boo hoo, you just have to look at our super awesome custom printed pedal while you hear the riff. But uh, this is Set the Witch on Fire. This was, I think the second song I did for the Lunar Satan project. And here it is. Let's not forget that time that uh, Toman invited us to do their collab, their shred collab, whatever was it called? I don't know, it's this video right here. But uh, Nick and Will were both in that, of course. I shot it, I wiretapped it. Uh, that's, that's kind of my role around here. I'm trying to be a little bit more forward on camera, but I'm always behind the camera. So here is the full clip of one of Will's submissions using the Thunderbird, which I think was, yeah, brand new at the time. So this would have been mid-2020, I believe. Uh, check it out.
And of course, no discussion about the bass channel would be complete without mentioning Josh and his cover contributions. Now, of course, the most notable, the biggest, the most extreme, the best, there's so many words you can use. Example of the Josh cover thing is our Injustice for All. We have a damn banner behind me because of this video, but we've done plenty. I think we've done like 80 or 90 different cover videos now. So here are just four notable ones, just fun ones. Uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't wiretap any of the Injustice for All settings. I didn't think to at the time, but uh, here's four of the cover sessions that I did have the foresight to wiretap. brings us to today, where the channel stands today, the people who regularly contribute today. Uh, I am grateful for all of them. Thank you all for being a part of this ride and helping us get to 100,000 subscribers and 20 million views. And I couldn't think of a better use of my time than, than making these videos for anyone who cares to watch them. So big thanks to Dave. Chuck. And Doug. Can't forget Jamie Lewis. Nick Maffei. Nikki Tedesco, Lily Mitchell, our friend KP up in Norway, and our friend Chris Chilton out in New Zealand. I think I'm in there somewhere too.
So again, thank you all so much for watching not only this video, but any and all of the videos that you've watched in the past. I really appreciate it. Uh, we all got to this 100K together. Whether it be me and the rest of the crew who's in front of the camera, or you at home on your computer watching them, this was a big group effort, and uh, thank you all for watching our videos. I, it's just insane to me that we started this on a whim on a Tuesday in 2016, and and here we are with our own custom printed pedals. So uh, I think you've heard probably 25 samples of this now throughout the video. So if you do want to get one for yourself, uh, again, the link is in the description. Go over to Sign Lab's website. And uh, I don't think you can get this version, but you can get the standard purple one, which will sound and function identically. And uh, I really mean it, man. This is one of my favorite fuzz pedals of all time. It's it's in the top five. So with that, uh, we've looked at the past, we've talked about the present, and there's only one way to look, which is the future. So I'm gonna leave you with a new wiretap riff that I, it's so new, I don't even have video for it yet. Uh, but Clint Wells recently reached out to me again and asked if I wanted to be a part of his uh, rock album coming out. Stoner rock album, I think he called it. So here is the first single from that project, uh, which fun fact, I'm going to touch on this later. When the album is done and mixed and out, I'm going to do a whole episode on it. But just for now, spoiler alert, my mission statement has been I'm using Gibson basses for every song. So every song is a Gibson bass. This is the first single uh, entitled Gotcha using the Gibson G3, which is pretty much everybody's favorite bass, I think, in the room. At least one of. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with that. Again, no video of me playing it. So boo-hoo, you got to look at this awesome thing. And we will catch you uh, whenever it is that we catch you. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you. This is uh, one of my favorite, actually it might be my favorite fuzz pedal that we looked at in 2021, if not one of my favorites of all time. That's a lofty title, but we'll say top five of all time with our logo on it. That is so goddamn cool. Holy shit. Signature red color. That looks really good. Wow. Like, damn. Yeah. That is so, that box totally threw it. It's smart Wi-Fi disc. Dude, this is so cool. I got to do B-roll of this. Oh my God. How did, oh, I'm just, I want to, I guess it's in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is fucking cool. <laughs> Holy shit. 
All right, that's all I have to say. Holy shit. <laughs>